Seven months ago, it was despair for the Hobart Chargers and what could have been as the women went down in the elimination final and the men went down in the preliminary final. Hello everyone, welcome to Chargers TV, welcome to our first preview show. I'm Ronald Riggs as we come to you from the President's Office here in Hobart and we're going to introduce our special guest first. What a big way to kick off season 2018 with David Bartlett, the President of the Telstra Hobart Chargers. David, welcome. Well, it's always great to be on Chargers TV and I know you guys will be doing another great job of putting keeping our fans updated all season so looking forward to it of course we're excited that we are covering season 2018 once again for the Telstra Hobart Chargers and David we're 24 hours away before the big game against Kilsyth how are you feeling this time round well, I've got to say I'm feeling um, uh, much less stressed than I was this time at last year, and that's mainly because over the year we've really built, um, you know, along with Chargers TV, we've built a great group of volunteers. I think we've got probably double the number of volunteers this year working to put game night together, um, and that's meant um, I haven't been quite so stressed and I've been able to turn my attention to um, making sure our players are out in the media and out in the community um, and, um, you know, um, trying to coach the coaches to, uh, to get things uh, in order for Friday night. But um, it's going to be a big one. And, of course, being a big one, obviously we've got a great crew of volunteers, as you say, and we've been fitted out, mate, with, um, with these brand-new hoodies. Do you I, want to explain about I that? do like your uh, Rex the Rhino Wrangler hoodies <laughs> and... Um, Every uh, Chargers volunteer this year, with thanks to Mood Food and Bennett's Petroleum, will be fitted out and kitted out with a fantastic bright blue hoodie. So on game night, uh, you'll know where our ushers are, where our volunteers are, and um, and who's uh, working. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, that's thanks, great thanks to Bennett's Petroleum and Mood Food, who have come on board to uh, fuel up our uh, our volunteer army and our Rhino Wranglers. Much appreciated for sure. What are we expecting from a game? Game night entertainment aspect. There's been a little bit of talk about. There's a few changes within um, play introductions and all that type of stuff, and there might be some more glitz and glamour. Can you divulge a bit there? Well, look, um, number one, we've sold every corporate box um, before the season's even started. Mm -hmm. So to start with, around the court, it's going to be spectacular atmosphere, and I'm sure ticket sales are going really strong as well compared with last year. Mm -hmm. So we're going to build bigger and better crowds, which is going to be just fantastic for the atmosphere. But on top of that, we've tried to lift the game night production uh, another level. It's certainly from 2016 to 2017, with thanks to Chargers TV and a couple of our sponsors like What's On In, we've, uh, we lifted a notch, but we're going up another notch because we can't rest and we want our fans to know that, um, you know, be careful walking down the stairs at the deck when uh, game's about to start because it's going to be blackout and it's going to be a fantastic pre-game hype video for all um, with lots of noise and action. In fact, uh, we've also got uh, Craig and Henry working on game night entertainment on the floor and what they're telling me is they don't want 30 seconds of downtime. It's going to be relentless from 6pm to 9.30pm on, on screen and on court entertainment. Uh, very exciting and make sure you get to the game Friday night to have a look at the game night festivities. Um, what is your aim for, for the women's and men's team? What is that number one thing on the list of David Bartlett? Well, look, I know the coaches hate it when I say this, <laughs> but, you know, the president has to have some uh, leeway to say what he wants. And ultimately what I want, and I think what all Chargers fans want, is um, uh, two championships this year. And frankly, the basketball department led by Corey Davey and the addition of Mark Nash um, this year, I think have put two spectacular teams on the court both of them on paper I think are championship teams both the men and the women's both of them I think will be play a really exciting brand of basketball a slam dunking alley ooping no look passing kind of basketball um, and that's what the fans want to see I am very confident we'll be finishing in the top three or four teams in both the women's and men's uh, leagues it's a bit of a chook raffle from there but my ultimate aim is to host a double hitter grand final here in Hobart, and I know we'll have three or four thousand people show up for that. Uh, good to have high expectations, I, I'd imagine. Um, and of course, you just touched on the crowd, and there's been a lot of talk in 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 the media circles about 
where we need to be with our NBL bid and, and that type of thing. But you've expressed to the fans to get out to the deck and support our very own Telstra Hobart Chargers this season. Well, the truth is there's no point in waiting around until NBL arrives in Tasmania. Um, we've got NBL players. We've got Craig Moller showing up with his championship ring tomorrow. We've got Trey Nichols, who is in NBL ready, absolutely. Mathang, we know, is NBL standard as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got some, and of course in the WNBL, we know we've got players like uh, Kathleen, yes. uh, Clara, and of course um, Britt Smart, who's just played a WNBL final. So you want NBL quality players, come to the Chargers. If you want NBL franchise in Tasmania in the future, the very best thing we can show the NBL during 2018 is that we've got bums on seats and more and more people want to watch top flight basketball. So the best thing you can do is um, buy a ticket to the Chargers. Um, I'll finish off with the last question. The big off-season controversy between you and me, there's all this rumour, speculation that I've had something to do with the media v celebrity game and, and kind of half-rigged it now. I will come out and flatly deny that and say so I had no involvement whatsoever. But are we going to get... Uh, now, we've, we've both looked at the fixture and we are finding it very hard to fit the game in, but do you want a rematch? There, there must be a rematch, and, I, and uh, there absolutely will be a celeb uh, media rematch. We haven't worked out the date yet, mm. Ronald, but one of the things I'll be insisting on this year is that we have some independent people <laughs> on the bench working the scoreboard, uh, and um, and I'll also make sure that Brent Costello um, is called for a technical foul if he hits me as hard as he did last year. <laughs> That was one of the biggest hits I have ever seen. We still love Brent, though. He does a great job, but whoo, he knows how to bring a player down. All right, so stay, stay tuned for details on that media celeb game. I'm sure we'll have some details later in the season. But, David, great to talk to you here in the President's office. Um, really good to catch up before the, before the games begin on Friday. And um, thank you for your time, and no doubt we'll see you out there on, out of there on the deck on Friday, mate. Well, Ronald, thanks to you and your crew for already a great uh, pre-season, but really looking forward to seeing the show before Friday's tip-off and um, really looking forward to seeing what you guys do during the year. Chargers TV are absolutely integral, important part of um, the Chargers family and we can't wait to see what you do this year. Thanks, Ronald. David Bartlett with us there and we're going to throw it back to Justin in the studio and take it from there. Back to you, mate. Thanks for that, Ronald, and great to hear from our president, David, on what should be a great upcoming season. And we'll be back right after the break to preview this week's action. No questions asked. Do we need a stretcher? Yeah, we do. And we are back here in Studio S. We've made another move. We've moved a lot uh, here on Chargers TV, particularly last season in the off-season. But we're now here in Studio S. And rejoining me back in the studio is Ronald Riggs. Ronald, we're in for a huge amount of action here in Round 1 at the Doan Entertainment Centre. Absolutely, Justin. Great to be back here at Studio S as well too. And uh, obviously great to hear from David Bartlett in our first segment as well. So, as you say, Friday night... Uh, is round one of the SCABL and it's going to be the Hobart Chargers taking on the Kilsyth Cobras and let's preview the women's game first Justin and uh, now for the Chargers they're down one player Kathleen Shearer is still in Poland and therefore is unavailable this week uh, and Kilsyth looking at early form and on paper seem to be the early favourites well based on their form they have probably the deepest roster in the entire women's competition we're looking at and Angela Beadle, uh, Steph Blixarves, uh, three of the last four MVPs amongst those guys. Uh, Beadle last year, the MVP. Steph was the scoring champion last year. So some tremendous depth at the absolute top. And then you've got players like a Jasmine Gill, who's able to pour in the points. Someone like a Chantel Piera, mm-hmm. who's able to pour in points. Chelsea D'Angelo, young and up and coming. Um, Hope uh, Turdich, she's also pouring in some good mm-hmm. numbers over her career. Again, scoring depth, elite talent levels for Kilsyth. It's going to be a really big game. Uh, and absolutely, and from our, our side of, of, of view, or from our point of view, really, um, Brittany Smart, Shana Thompson, Clara Wisher have to step up in this ball game for Hobart. Absolutely. It's going to be very hard for us to bang on the boards knowing that we are missing Kathleen. So small ball is going to be the flavour of the day, I do believe. Uh, Brittany, you know, is a proven at WNBL star. Shana is a great shooter, so they're going to have to really rely on her outside shooting. 
Um, Britt Parker as well is going to be a mm. big factor. Absolutely. So there's a massive, massive contingent of smaller players for the Chargers that are going to have to step up. Um, and quite possibly missing for Kilsyth will be uh, Beadle and Gill due to play overseas. So we do have the potential to be able to knock these guys off with some of their top talent missing. And a prediction, Justin, what are you thinking? Kilsyth for me are probably looking like championship favourites to start with, but I can't really discredit uh, the Hobart women at home. So I'm going to give the Chargers a very, very slender one-point win. There you go. You've heard it here first. Uh, let's go to the men's game. Obviously, the men's game is going to be really exciting. A whole lot of changes for, for both teams. Um, now, Kilsyth have brought in some very good NBL development talent. And, of course, Hobart have brought in Trey Nichols. Uh, Craig Moller, who's just come off an NBL championship with the Mel- with Melbourne United, and it's going to be it's going to be a cracker of a game, I reckon, Justin. Well, just looking at the men themselves for Kilsyth, they have six players with some sort of NBL experience. We're sitting here with Mathang, who's an NBL talent. Mm. Craig, an NBL champion. Trey's NBL ready. We have that depth to match them as well. Some real good scoring. They spread their scoring amongst their team. I believe they had you know almost four to five players in double digit scoring mm. last season. And they've got a lot of young guys who are either playing for the NBL or have just come out of the college system in the United States. Again, we have some great young talent here in Hobart, the likes of a Stan Wicks and a Hargrave. Mm. Uh, Matty Young's currently out, but we do have that depth. Someone like a Cam Brown, who's taken giant steps over his career, he's going to step up more this year. I think we can really bring it to him. Absolutely, Justin. And, of course, you know, you speak about Mafang. Mafang coming off a really great season for Hobart last year. He's, is he going to be... The man to really carry this team, or does he expect that support from Trey and Craig and the locals? Well, I feel that that support is there. It was there last year with the likes of Rob, with Tom, with Lewis and Chris. Mm -hmm. I think we have the exact same talent depth this year, if not a little deeper. Um, Zach White's going to be a huge, crucial player for us as well. Uh, His athletic ability and ability to get to the rim is going to be awesome, particularly with someone like a Craig, who's more of a big who shoots outside. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trey can get to the rim. I mean, many people, if you've been to our uh, Facebook page, will see Trey dunking um, and his Mm -hmm. ability to get to the rim. So we have a really good athletic and deep Mm -hmm. talent uh, pool to pick from. And again, those young guys that have been playing really well will step up and hopefully be able to support Mathang and the rest of the crew for season 2018. And of course, for Kilsyth, the big X factor for me, and I was lucky enough to get to a Sydney Kings game uh, in the NBL season and see Dane Panu play. And the, the way he played in the final home game for Sydney, I'm telling you what, if he can bring that form um, from that last game into the first game of, of Siebel, I'm telling you what, Kilsyth might be hard to stop. Yeah, well, Dane was a 16-point-per-game play, player last season. Ten rebounds. His ability to play on both sides of the ball is evident. As you mentioned, he is an NBL talent, one of the six NBL talents that Kilsyth have. So plenty of depth and plenty of quality coming to the deck uh, this Friday night. Absolutely, and it's 8 p.m. tip-off. Uh, this Friday night at the DEC uh, for Kilsyth Justin Shula is out uh, uh, as as head coach he's on national coaching duty with the under 16 national team so he will not be uh, there so his coaching staff will take over the head coaching role uh, for the Chargers it's, it's of course Anthony Stewart he's ready and raring to go and um, uh, we heard from Stewie a couple of weeks ago and he's quietly confident that the boys can get it done I'm quietly confident we've got as good or not even better team than last year. I mean a lot will rely on Trey uh, Nichols at the point guard position and the impact he has across the league. Uh, He's really focused on playing at the NBL level so um, he'll have to play well to get to there. So I'm quietly confident that he's going to be a sort of a crowd favourite this year. And that's all we have time for here on the previous show. But before we go, uh, we've got a bit of a plug to give. The Michael Johns Shooting Star Breakfast is on this Friday morning. Of course, our season launch at the Doing Entertainment Centre. And, of course, Justin, there is a former uh, Hobart Tessie Devils player coming down as our special guest. Yes, Paul Stanley uh, is coming down for the breakfast. He'll hopefully be, vo- be able to grab an interview with us here at Chargers TV. Mm-hmm. We can present to you guys later on. But, yeah, Paul, absolute legend. Uh, once led the NBL in school. Scoring, uh, such was his talents. Uh, an all-time shooter, uh, him and Steve Carfino, many people will remember tearing up the Devil's Den uh, down in Kingborough there. So he'll be there 
Uh, there'll be plenty of our local players there available to talk with. So it's going to be a great season launch. Uh, absolutely. And tickets are available through our Facebook page uh, or you can go on to stickytickets.com.au, search the Hobart Chargers, and you should find more details there. 7.30 a.m. start in the morning and heads through to about 9. And it's going to be an absolute great morning on the morning of opening night in the SEABL competition. And that's all we have time for. On behalf of Justin Bryan, I'm Ronald Riggs, and we'll see you again soon on Chargers TV.